Okay, guys, so today we're going to talk about understanding density. Previously, we've talked about mass and volume, and you guys did an a experiment in a lab collecting some data for mass and volume. So today we're going to talk about density, which relates to both mass and volume. So to get started, what is density? So we want to talk about what are our definitions for density. And for those of you that have been on Quizlet studying, you would have noticed the different definitions. One way that we can refer to density is a comparison of how much matter there is in a certain amount of space. Another definition would be the amount of matter in a given space. Uh, also, we can refer to it as the amount of mass in a given volume. If you remember our definition for mass, mass is the amount of matter in an object. If you remember our definition for volume, volume is the amount of space an object takes up. So this is really mass, and this is volume over here. So we can also refer to density as the amount of mass in a given volume. Okay. So moving on, uh, a good example of how to illustrate density is this people in a square demonstration. So we have two squares right here. Both squares are the same volume. So how would we know which square is more dense? Well, it depends on how many people are in the square. So we'll use dots to represent people. In this first square, A, we have about five dots. In our second square, B, we have about four times the amount. So just by looking at this visual representation, you can see that square B is more dense. If you remember our definition, density is the amount of matter in a given space. This square B has more matter in that given space than square A. The spaces are the same size. This one has more matter in it. Therefore, this square is more dense. What happens now if we change the volume or the amount of space? Notice now we have shrunk or reduced the size or the space or the volume for square A. And square B has more volume. So now let's see. We keep the amount of matter the same, five people in square A, or five circles, five circles or people in square B. Now if you look at it, this one has more people per, si per uh, given space. Because we've reduced the space and we've kept the amount of people the same, this one has now become, square A has now become more dense because that space has been reduced. All right, so these are good representations for density. Square A is more dense now than square B. A formula for density, now remember density is the amount of mass in a given volume. So when we're talking about ways to calculate density, we have to take mass and divide it by volume. So we say our formula for density is mass divided by volume. Mass over volume or mass divided by volume. So what does that look like? When we have mass divided by volume, and you know in every calculation you have to have a unit, so our units for density will be grams per centimeter cubed or grams per milliliter. Again, this if you look at this, this is our unit for mass, and this is our unit for volume. If you look at it over here, I have mass over volume. And if I look at my units, I have mass over volume. It's the same thing here, mass over volume volume. Milliliters are our units for volume. Again, mass over volume. So you always have to remember your units. You can never forget your units. Again, we can use, so if you're thinking, it, does it always have to be grams and centimeter cubed or grams and milliliter? Well, no. It could be kilograms per centimeter cubed or it could be kilograms per kilometer kiloliter, sorry, or it could be kilograms per liter. But these two are the most common units that you'll see, especially for our class. All right. And again, why are these the units for density? Because we have our unit for mass over our unit for volume. And our formula for density is mass divided by volume. So the units are going to follow that same pattern with mass over unit for volume. All right. So let's try one of these density problems. First problem says Frank has a paperclip and it has a mass of 9 grams and a volume of 3 centimeters cubed. Again, we're using centimeters cubed for volume because a paperclip is solid. So 9 grams, 3 centimeters cubed, what is the density of the paperclip? So first we put our formula down. Density is equal to mass divided by volume. So then we substitute the numbers. What's 
what's our numbers? Mass, we have 9 grams. Volume, 3 centimeters cubed. So density is going to be 9 grams divided by 3 centimeters cubed. We know 9 divided by 3 is going to give us 3, right? Then we put our units back, grams slash centimeter cubed. If you look at it, it's the same units from over here. It's no surprise. You take the unit for mass, you put the hash mark back, and you take the unit for volume and put it back. So it's grams slash centimeters cubed. Let's look at the second problem. Second problem, we says Frank also has an eraser. The mass of the eraser is 3 grams, and the volume of the eraser is 1 centimeter cubed. Again, the eraser is a solid, so for volume, we use centimeter cubed. What is the density of that eraser? Same thing. We put our formula first. Density is mass divided by volume. Then we substitute our numbers. 3 grams for the mass, 1 centimeter cubed for the volume. We know 3 divided by 1 is 3, and then we put our units back. 3 grams per centimeter cubed. Pretty simple. Now what I want you guys to do is pause the video and try these problems on your own. Set them up exactly the same way I set them up in the previous example. Feel free to go back and look at the example again. And you're going to work on these two problems. Now that you've worked on the first two, I also want you to work on these two. So you have four problems in total. Again. You're going to set it up the same way. Put your density formula. Density is equal to mass divided by volume. Substitute the numbers and calculate the answer. Do not forget to put your unit at the end for density. And make sure that you bring these four problems to you with you to class next day. OK, moving on. We just talked about density as it relates to solids. Density also relates to liquids because we have liquid volumes and liquids have mass as well. So it's something that we call liquid layers, which basically talks about if you mix liquids or you pour liquids together that don't mix or liquids that have different densities, they will form liquid layers. And I'm sure a lot of you have probably done this experiment in the fifth grade or some of the earlier grades where you create liquid layers. And the reason that allows us to create liquid layers is that the liquids with the higher densities will go to the bottom of the column, and the liquids with the lower density will be on the top. So a high density means it's going to sink to the bottom. Low density means it will float to the top. So this is an example of a liquid layer, what we call um, density column. We have four different liquids. One is on the top, one is second, third, and fourth. They form these layers because the, each of these liquids have different densities. So what I want you to do is look at this picture and decide which one has the highest density and which one is going to have the lowest density. Imagine that the densities of these liquids are 10 grams per milliliter, 6 grams per milliliter, 3 grams per milliliter, and 5 grams per milliliter. And what I want you to do is match these density values with which liquid. So you can redraw this column or just write on that same sheet of paper where you did your problems. So let me know, does the yellow, what's the density number that matches with the yellow liquid? What's the density number or density value that matches with the blue liquid? Density value that matches with the red liquid and the density value that matches with the green liquid. Now remember, previously we said high density should be to the bottom low density will be to the top and then everything else in between will line up. So pause the video and go ahead and set that up. Moving on, this is another liquid uh, layer or what we call a density column. This one is more complex but it'll help you to see if you did the first example for liquid layers correctly. So we know the liquids on the right, they're going to line up according to their densities. And let's imagine that they have these different densities, 15 being our largest, and 15 grams per milliliter being our largest, and 3 grams per milliliter being our smallest. So of course, the question we want to know is, which liquids have which densities? And it's really simple. We know the highest density will be to the bottom, and the lowest density will be to the top. So what that should look like is 3 grams per milliliter on the top because that's our lowest value for density. Then we have 7, then 9, then 10 grams per milliliter, 12 grams per milliliter, 
and 15 grams per milliliter. So if you look at it, lowest density flows to the top, highest value number, highest density sinks to the bottom. So you can use this example to see if you did the previous slide correctly. Feel free to go back and check your answers. So in review, what we went over, and these are some questions that you should be able to answer after watching this video. What's our formula for density? Density should be mass divided by volume. What happens when you pour liquids that have different densities? We know based on the density values, the ones with the highest density values sink to the bottom. The ones with the lower density values flow to the top. Will the liquid on the top have the highest or lowest density? Again, lowest densities flow to the top. And then would the liquid on the bottom have the highest or lowest? Highest values will sink to the bottom. So based on the video, what I want you guys to work on is this question. You also bring this to class with you uh, for next class. So let's say Jake has a ruler, a book, and an electric balance, or a triple beam balance. How can Jake find the density of the book using the tools that he has? So just write a short descriptive, descriptive paragraph on how can Jake find the density of the book using the tools that he has. He has just the book, a ruler, and a balance. Think about it. Density has to do with mass and volume. So those are two things that he would need. All right. Remember to bring all your questions to class and this, the answers to this um, this question on this slide.